Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Really Do Research and we are in our Gemology and Geology unit. You should check out our YouTube channel for some fun activities that you can do with this unit, including printing out some cool 2D to 3D gems that you can fold into a gem that's plastic. We are gonna make a paper version of that now and I'll show you how to do that. And we also have some really cool geology projects. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also you can support us at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. So today we are going from two dimensions to three dimensions. This is a great way of learning how to think and giving you spatial awareness and spatial um, problem solving skills. It comes in really, really handy in a lot of types of math and science. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to make a gem and you can pick the shape of your gem. So we have four shapes here, but if you want a different shape, you can totally do a different shape. It just needs to have like all straight sides. And then the number of sides will determine how many other things you need to cut out. So I have the printout that has some templates for all four of those options. And then there's a, a little clipboard that will show you how to put it together. And if you want to, you could just cut yours straight out of this little clipboard and fold that into a gem. Or if you wanna make your own template, I'm gonna walk you through that right now. And the great part of making your own template is that you can choose a different type of paper. Maybe that's a clear paper, maybe it's a glitter paper, but you can do it on any type of paper that you may, might not be able to print on. So since we have the octagon over here on our little handout that you can download, I'm actually gonna do the triangle today. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out your triangle with your scissors. And the better we cut it, the better our projects will come out. But I always strive for good enough and not necessarily perfect. That's perfection is a hard thing to reach, especially when you're a kid. So that's gonna be the first part. I can put that on my paper. And then the next piece is you're going to make a trapezoid where the smaller part is at your triangle and the larger part is gonna to be towards the other triangles that make your bottom. So this is our facet, this is the top, or this is the table, sorry, this is the top of the gem that would be like at the very tippity top. And our trapezoids are gonna make that angle part and then we'll have some other triangles that come down. So you can make a trapezoid, you can experiment with what happens if I make my trapezoid sort of more elongated or less so. And you can see how that changes what your gem looks like. And what we'll do is we'll put our trapezoid along our triangle. Now I'm gonna cut my last piece out before I start folding it all together, and that is gonna make the bottom point here. So this one, this triangle is gonna line up, it's gonna be the same size as the larger part of your trapezoid. So you do have to, if you're making your own template, check those little items right like there. So I have these pieces and you might be wondering, well, Dr. Erica, how does this make a gem if I just trace around this? And you would be right, it doesn't yet. So what we'll do is we're gonna trace around our first triangle. And the reason why I like tracing around all of this is that it gives us an idea on where we're gonna need to fold. This is a little easier if you cut your stuff if you print it on cardstock versus just regular paper. So there's my first triangle. This will be the table, the top of that gem. And now I'm going to take my trapezoid and I will line it up to the bottom of that triangle and I will trace around this as well, keeping it in place as best that I can. And we'll cut this out. If you're really worried about the lines, you can do it in pencil that you could erase. You can also fold this towards the inside so you can't see it. I'm gonna take this trapezoid and I'm now gonna move it to my other pieces or my other sides of my triangles. So now I'm gonna go here like this. Let's see, there we go. And you'll notice that they don't quite meet up, which is good because I'm gonna cut this out and they'll fold to create sort of a beveled angle in my gem. Now, if I wanted, I could make this a little steeper like that and that would sort of make it bend and the table be taller. So these are some things that you can change if you would like to. And here I'm going to 
trace this one in right here. You do just want to make sure that if you do change your trapezoid, you change it on your template and then trace it around your new changed trapezoid. So it's all the same for all of them. All right. So now I have these pieces, which are going to make up the side parts of the gem. And I'll take my triangle, which is going to make that base of my gem. And this one, oops, I'm actually realizing, well, we could fold it together like this for just three. I'll show you another way, actually. So another way we can do this is actually we could cut straight around this part of our triangle instead of doing these two. And we can put these triangles like this, which is what I did over here. Um, that makes it so that this part all folds at the bottom and that you don't have to tape it together as much. You decide what you would like to do. It will all still work the same for you. And when you do these bottom triangles, you do need to make sure you use the same number as sides on your table. So I have three sides on my table, which is a triangle, and I'm going to do three of these together. And then on top of each of these triangles, if you want it to fold kind of really nicely, we'll put these guys here like this. Just like that. And you'll notice it's okay if you make a mistake as you're making this. We did ours in pencil. You can always erase the other stuff, but we're going to cut it out so it doesn't even matter. All right, so now I'm going to cut out my gem. So we'll cut this guy out. And you're just going to cut out along the very outside lines of everything. All right. So I don't want to cut on those inside lines I traced. Those I will fold on in just a moment to sort of create my gem. Like this. Although I am going to cut these little trapezoids off that I'm not going to need anymore. Just like that. All right, so now I have my gem that's cut out. I'm gonna fold it on all of these lines. So you can choose if you wanna fold out or in. It might be easier to fold out at first, and then if you'd like to, you could fold it in afterwards. I'll just fold all of these. Oops. As best as we can. If you want to get really precise, you can use a ruler to trace around things. All right, so now I'm going to fold this together. I'll need a piece of tape here where this guy comes, and I'll need some tape up here where those facets meet that table. And that's all that I need for tape, so that's kind of a nice thing about doing it where it's all one piece like that. So we'll take our clear tape. I think I'll maybe go inside out so I could flip this all the other direction and then you won't see any of my pencil marks, which is like a clever way to hide the fact that this is like a do-it-yourself thing. If you want, you could also use something like um, your hot glue gun. So we'll just put a little piece, this might be a little too long. I'm going to put a little piece on the inside, right here, and I'm first going to bring these two sides together and then tape over that really nicely, just like that. That's going to be my first piece. That'll be hard to get to later. Oop, my tape is not wanting to stick to this paper. There we go. We'll press it down really nicely. And then I'm going to add some pieces of tape here or some sort of glue. Now, bonus, if you wanted to, you could make your gem light up with an LED. You could really just plop this around your LED, so the long legs on top, the short legs on the bottom. You could just plop it inside as a fun little thing. It'll last for probably about a day if you do that. 
which will be fun. So you could, we could just plop that inside, no circuitry necessary. Just put the long leg on the top of the battery and the short leg on the bottom of the battery. And that will make your LED light up. If it doesn't, just flip it around because LEDs are one-way streets and you might have the long leg on the bottom of the battery. All right, so we will open those up just ever so slightly. The last one's always the hardest one to close because you don't have sort of that nice ability to get in there and press. But what you can do is you can take something long and skinny like a pencil sometimes and you can try to get that under there to press down or you can just press really gently. Now we have this fun little gem. We add that LED, which adds another great little element to our gems. We are making some hot glue gems and we'll make another plastic gem that we learn how to program in Tinkercad code blocks and fold up and those both have LEDs in them. So maybe this is just an LED gem week, but this is sort of a fun little project. You can cut out the other types and see what they look like. The more sides that you add on to your table, this top piece, the more intricate and more tracing you will have to do, so it becomes a little bit more difficult. So if you got littler hands, you might want to stick with the triangle, and if you're really feeling like you're brave and you've got this, you can do the octagon, or you can make your own. You can make, a, I don't know, a dodecahedron type of a piece, and you can make a huge one if you wanted to. Thank you so much for joining us for this fun little LED 2D to 3D paper gem. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time. Bye, friends.